for today's webinar on topic industrial automation and industry 4.0 for smart factory and uh, machine automation uh, my assistant professor mechatronics engineering department welcome ankit to today's area sir for today's webinar session and in intro of automation and he he has expertise in scalda hmi bfd dcs and and many more you know i can add in that uh, and he has delivered many expert session vocational training industrial training uh, not only for the uh, like teaching and all but he has done it for the industrial persons also so i welcome uh, ankit sir and i request him to start the session sir okay. thank you thank you so much for the warm welcome sir uh, so uh, very good morning to all of you so as uh, kaushal told that today we are here for the webinar uh, that is based on the topic is industrial automation and industry 4.0 for the smart factory automation so let's start with our topic so what will be the agenda of this webinar so first we will go uh, about like what is automation then we will uh, know about the application of the automation what are the components are used in the automation then after we will go for the industry 4.0 in that what is node road or uh, what is not red and what is cloud and cloud computing then after we will uh, 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 we, we will go for the what is smart factory automation and then we will do a little bit of practical demonstration of for the smart factory or you can say for the machine automation so let's begin with the first topic that is what is automation so as you all know that automation is nothing else but in simple layman terms if we can say that then it is automatically right whatever the process is going that is going to be automatic so here we are talking about the industrial automation so whatever we are talking that is related to industry that is related to industry process right so that's why we called it industrial automation apart from that there are other automation like home automation is available office automation is available but here we are going to talk about the industrial automation so automation is basically the delegation of human control function to the technical equipment for the purpose purpose is that to increase the productivity reducing the cost increasing the quality and increasing the safety in working environment condition so why we are using this automation technologies nowadays in auto, uh, uh, you can say in all the industries or you can say manufacturing and process industry just because of these four reasons to increase the productivity to reduce the cost maintain quality or you can say increase productivity and safety right so suppose if we are taking example like if we depend on the human or you can say if we are going with the manual process then there will be lots of disadvantages like suppose if we depend on the human or labor then whatever we have suppose we have some manufacturing industries related to you can say food processing industries so there are we have a target of the production suppose we want to manufacture 10000 packets of food per day and we are depend on thousands labor so some day suppose there will be it will happen like uh, like 10 labor will be absent or maybe there is a something issue like like they are not going to work with the 100 percent accuracy just because of there some personal issues or you can say anything so considering all these things what will happen it is going to affect on your production end of the day you are not going to achieve your target of 10000 or uh, you can say 10000 of packets now second thing is that like people is not like labor is not working with the 100% efficiency and proper focus then what will happen they will uh, there are highly chances that they are going to compromise with the quality of the product and there are highly chances if human is working on anything that means there are highly chances that there will be chances of occurring a error so to minimize all these things we are going to use automate like we are using automation in the our industries so where automation is used in simple term if i can say that from the agriculture industry or from the agriculture to it is going to the space technologies it could be manufacturing unit assembly lines machine control packaging industries material handling industries or many more industries that i will show you in the next a few slides which are the industries for that so as i said that if you apply the automation to our plant then what will happen <coughs> quality is going to be increased because what will happen we are going to follow the standard procedure of the automation if it is like whatever the condition is there if that is matched then and then your final product is going to be dispatched or then and then your final product is going to be manufactured right so based on that what will happen your quality is going to be increased your production count if you are depend on on the machines then there are like uh, you can say that if you are uh, assigning a target of 1000 products or you can say the 10000 product then 110000 that 
machine is going to product produce that much of product whatever they you assign the target that is going to be happen so productivity productivity is going to be increase labor cost is going to be low and then after what will happen whatever you decide whatever is your target that is going to be matched and because of that what will happen you will be in a profitable position you will be in a good position so we are talking lots of about the, these technologies like if you are electrical engineer mechatronics engineer electronics engineer you can say power electronics engineer or instrumentation engineer then during your academics you heard lots of about the automation 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 so why we use automation so you can see in this slide the global market of the automation in 2018 is the market is 157 billion you can say 157 billion <coughs> sorry dollar and by 2026 in next 2 to 3 years right so it is going to be 296 or you can say it's almost double from the 2018 whatever the survey is happened in 2018 it is going to be almost double around the 300 billion dollar market all over the globals right so that's why we are talking lots of about the nation along with that what is happening nowadays you all guys know that now the central government is uh, approaching for the atmanirbhar bharat and uh, uh, we are doing all the, like whatever the manufacturing happened that we are depending on we are not depending on the other countries we are trying to manufacture in our countries atmanirbhar bharat or you can say make in india so because of that what is happening manufacturing industries are growing now new manufacturing companies are getting open now along with that the re, as per the two recent surveys of you can say by uh, 2021 india is at the fifth position of the manufacturing in the global market india is at the fifth position for the manufacturing right and in next 3 to 5 years it is going to be happen like india is going to be at the third position china and you can say korea after that india is going to be at the third position so there are huge market for the different different type of man products for the manufacturing that's why all the manufacturing industries has to use the automation that's why nowadays we are talking or we are learning about this technologies if we talk about the history of the automation so earlier earlier the manufacturing industries was working they are working and they are doing the production but they were doing the manual control so what happened in manual control as i already told you that if you depend on the human there are highly chances of the errors product quality product product uh, quantity everything will be suffer so based on that what will happen there is one like uh, another one uh, another uh, uh, operations we were using that is pneumatic controls and hydraulic controls so what was happening over there we have to control our process through the pneumatic or you can say hydraulic so pneumatic it means the air control operation hydraulic it means it is <coughs> oil control operation so in pneumatic if i give you example of pneumatic simple then if you are traveling in the volvo buses so over there the door is getting automatically open or closed automatically in the sense the driver is pressing the one button based on that door is getting open and closed so that door is getting open and closed by the pneumatic operation so what is happening over there like what is the disadvantage like major disadvantage is that it uh, in pneumatic control it is totally controlled by the air so your your pressure air pressure will be proper or accurate whatever the pressure is required to operate that device that must be over there if it is not there then what will happen your device is not working going to work properly suppose whenever you are going into the volvo so sometimes you might notice that that door is getting open very slow or cl getting closed very slow because the air pressure is not proper over there and that's why that door is not getting open in uh, or closing in proper speed so that is the dis major disadvantage apart from that that what is happening like that is completely like uh, if you operate with the pneumatic so there will be a pipe from there the air is going to pass if anything leakage is over there then at end of the day what will happen you will not get a proper pressure and just to figure out that fault it is going to take a time that's why it is going to depend on uh, impact on your manufacturing then after we uh, the hardware logic control is introduced so that is totally electrical based like contactor relays uh, timer counters were used in the industries through the hard wiring okay so we were using the hard wiring but there is also disadvantage like the, because of this hard wiring there are like there are chances that the panel is getting very bulky and if any fault is occur in that panel so it is uh, like uh, it is uh, it is taking a lots of time to figure out that fault then after logic gate was introduced logic gates was introduced it means electronic circuits like resistors capacitors and transistor based circuits there are also a few disadvantages of that circuit like if it, there is a small fault 
then we uh, it will take a lot of time to figure it out because in that circuit there will be lots of small small components and you have to check each and every components you have to check each and every path in the electronic circuits and end of the day what will happen you have to replace the entire circuit then and then it will work then after our automation technology or you can say plc programmable logic controller is was introduced in the 1970s so what will happen with the plc it replaced all the mechanical relays timer counters and contactors in the single device with the automatic process by doing a programming in this plc programmable logic controller you can control your entire process automatically as i already told you you can see this is the pneumatic you can see here this is the pneumatic operations this is the bulky panel this is the bulky panel with the elect electrical relay timer contactors if anything fault occurs from anywhere then it is very difficult to figure out the fault and because of that what will happen it is going to impact on your daily production it is going to impact on your production it means end of the day it will going to affect on your profit also this is the logic gate circuit you can say there will be lots of ic's registers capacitors transistors will be there and if any component is faulty over there then it is it will take a lot of time to figure it out and after our plc you can see this is the plc it replaced all that mechanical relay whatever the mechanical relays or you can say electrical relays contactors everything is replaced by this small hardware and by doing a programming in this hardware what you can do you can control your process automatically <laughs> now here you can see application of industrial automation so these are the industries first let us take a process control industries it means the food and beverages industry if we talk about the coca cola or you can say pepsi thumbs up whatever the beverages industries are there or you can say kingley water or bisley or uh, all these beverage industries they all are using 100% automation food industries you can say balaji gopal uh, real or apart from that lays whatever the food industries brands are there that are also, they are also using the automation process cement industries then you can say automobile industries in <coughs> sorry in automotive industries um, the, all the process is happening automatically robotics arm will be there i will show you the video also and it is controlled completely by the plc for the assembly process for the painting process or for the trimming process trimming in the sense whatever the components like a bonnet is over there then you can say your glass is over there so for the fitting of the, all the components fixing all the components that call a trimming process in the motion control industries or you can say packaging industries or you can say amusement park then motor and drive control steel rolling mills paper mills sugar mills infrastructure industries that means like whatever you are going into malls or cinemas so over there the uh, central air, air conditioning system is over there so to control that entire process plc is used then you can say for the boiler uh, or turbine process or you can say for the batch control industries that is for the chemical industry ink and paint industry it means you can say take example of asian paints burger narrow lake all these industries are using uh, automation then coal industries then after machine control for the cnc machine glass cutting machine plastic industries if you go into the, the south gujarat so we have a very big industries that's called cello cello plastic right so they are using 100% automation to manufacturing their ore products then after plant uh, controlling and monitoring it, you can say oil and gas industries if you go into the iocl uh, uh, bharat petroleum <coughs> reliance so all those industries are also using the oil and gas uh, you can say automation technology so after seeing this slide you can say there are there are almost all the industries are using nowadays automation there are none of the industries are even you can say if you talk about that grudyo so they are also using the automation machineries nowadays for their manufacturing process there are some leading automation companies who are providing the solution that is rockwell siemens abb schneider mitsubishi delta honeywell yokogawa and more, many more are there but these are the leading uh, automation companies who are providing a solution for the automation <coughs> now our second agenda agenda was that industrial automation components so there are three type of components are there field instruments control hardware and control software so let us talk about the individual each and one. so first is field instruments so what is the field instruments field instruments is nothing but is that is your sensors right so sensor can be uh, discrete or you can say digital or analog right so, uh, so we are using a, a discrete sensor that means uh, that is going to give a output in the form of on or off and analog sensor is going to give you output in the form of voltage or current so if you are using a voltage form then it will give you output in the range of 0 to 10 volt 
and if you are using a current phone then it will give you 4 to 20 milliampere output phone so what are those sensors so these are the some examples of that industrial sensor i am talking here about the industrial sensor whatever the sensors you have used for your uh, you can say for your uh, academic projects in my using with the microcontrollers that are not i'm talking here i'm talking about the industrial sensors that is your rtd thermocouple pressure transmitter flow transmitter level sensors conductivity sensor different type of gauge sensor ph sensor density sensor so here you can say this is the image of rtd sensor for the industrial temperature sensor here you can say this all is are different different type of level sensor this one is pressure sensor right so these are the <coughs> sensors which are used in industry then after second component is control hardware which is very very important for the automation technology that is your plc or you can say standalone pid controller so plc that means programmable logic controller here you can say different different images for the plcs so programmable logic controller is nothing but it is our industrial controller or you can say it is our industrial computer in that we are going to do a programming then we will transfer that programming into this controller and this controller is going to control our entire process automatically and there is another that is standalone pid controller which is used for the closed loop control system where suppose i am giving you a simple example we are using an air conditioning system in our home or our offices so that is where there are standalone pid controller you can say continuously process is going on and that is closed loop process so over there we are using a standalone pid controller our plc also offers the pid so in industry if it is required of the pid we are not going to use standalone we are going to use only plc over that because our plc has the feature of pid also <coughs> so as i said that plc is a one type of industrial computer we are going to program it we will connect inputs and outputs with this plc and then we will do a programming and accordingly your process is going to be automatic so what will be that input and outputs if i'm taking example of input that will be your push button your switches or you can say your sensors suppose if you want to measure a temperature of your room then you will connect an analog sensor over there you can say temperature sensor over there that will be analog type sensors that you will connect in the input then you will do a programming then what will happen your sensor is going to give a data to your controller accordingly your controller will analyze it and it will give you output in the form as what is the temperature of the suppose it is 30 degree then it will give you output of 30 degree that you can display anywhere wherever you require <coughs> then final control elements that is actuators solenoid control valves drives hooter lights all these are your final control element it means your output various brands of plcs are available that is rockwell automation siemens schneider mitsubishi abb delta honeywell yokogawa omron and more than 200 plus brands are available these are the measures which we are using in the industries now let's just talk about the programming language of plc so <coughs> sorry we are using a five uh, different different languages for the plc programming first one is letter logic second one is second one is structure text third one is instruction list sequential function chart sfc and last is function block diagram in that we are using mostly the one that is ladder logic ladder logic 90 in the 95 percent cases we are using the ladder logic and then after we are using function block diagram fbd where your process is complex or you can say for whenever you require dcs that i will explain you later what is dcs in that case we are using this function block diagram apart from these three language are used very less structured text and instruction list still are in demand but sfc we used very 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 less you can say for zero percent some 0.00 percent otherwise we are using mostly ladder and fbd so here you can see this is the uh, snapshot of the programming software of plc this is the one siemens brand programming software that's called ti portal that is screenshot over there <coughs> here you can say this is the programming this is the simple programming over here where <coughs> I have a simple process. Simple process is I have a one start switch, I have one stop switch, or you can say I have a one motor. So my requirement is very simple. When I press the start switch, my motor should be on. When I press the stop switch, my motor is going to be off. So I have to make a simple logic of the start stop for the my motor with the ladder logic. So this is the ladder logic. What is the ladder logic? You can say here there is this. This is called ladder. 
there will be a this two letter and between this two letter this whole network or rung in this network or rung we will place this type of contacts which are given in the software you can see here these are given in the software apart from that other instructions are suppose uh, earlier we used timer as a hardware like we we used physically timer but now if we are using a plc so we have a timer type instruction available in our software that we are going to use suppose my requirement is that when i press the start switch my motor should run for 5 second only then after it goes automatically off i don't have to press the stop switch so for that i have to take a timer if there is any counting process then i have to take a counter if there is any mathematical calculation in my industries then i have to use the math instruction <coughs> okay so now for a ladder logic we have to use uh, concept of nonc and logic gates so what is no this called no normally open and this is symbol of nc normally close right so what is normally open no means normally open and this is the symbol so what will happen here you have to give a phase here you have to return so when phase is going to pass from here earlier initially this is open condition no as the name suggests normally open so it is open so supply is not going to pass from here and here whatever you connect with with this side with the in this side so it is not going to be energized or you can say it is not going to be on because the supply is phase is not going to be passed from here when i press so no or nc is nothing but that is the push button push button whatever the push buttons we have here you can say i have a one this green color that is my push button okay so that will be no type or nc type so when i press this what will happen it is going to be converted into close so phase is going to pass and whatever we will connect over here that is going to energize <coughs> and this, the reverse process is going to happen with the nc right so in an nc what will happen initially it is close when you press it it is going to open so that's how i have I just can ignore this what i have con uh, a configure over here i have taken a nc of stop and no of for the start and then i have connected this is the indication for the output of one motor so what will happen phase is supply from here neutral is given from here so <coughs> phase is going to here it is nc so initially it will be on so supply is going to pass from here so i will get a supply over here now what will happen right now it is open but when i press this what will happen it is converted into nc and supply is going to pass from here and here i will get phase neutral is already getting so my motor is going to start so that is very simple logic now when what will happen suppose when i press this stop button so what will happen when i press this stop button so it is going to be open so whatever the phase is going from here that is not going to move ahead so what will happen your phase is not going to pass so what will happen your output is going to be off right so this call a simple ladder logic for the <coughs> on and off process okay here you can say this is the your ladder uh, you can the function block diagram so your log you have to create a logic in the form of block here you can see i have created the same logic in the form of block <coughs> now the third component is control software that is scada supervisory control and data acquisition scada software we used in the industries for the monitoring and controlling purpose suppose we have a uh, uh, used the plc and we have automate our process but to monitor and control the entire process from the our control room we have to use any software and that's called scada supervisory control and data acquisition now scada software has a different features you can say these are the listed over here gui graphical user interface trends alarms recipe security database connectivity script for the logic development i will give, show you the example of scada what is scada <coughs> various brands of scada software so different, different similar as a plc's different service provider you can say different companies are providing this scada software that is wonderwind inter siemens vcc allen bradley factory talk snyder video sitec g fanuc simplicity delta diu and more many more softwares are available in the market now so here i can see this is the scada software so from that scada software we can monitor our entire process suppose in my process what is that i have four tanks so you can say there are there are four tanks are over here then the liquids are getting passed <clears throat> then what is happening you can see this liquid is getting filled from here first initially it is getting filled then after this is mixer so two liquids are getting mixed over there 
then it is transferred to other tank then over there is mixing process happening then it is going to frustrate to the final tank here you can say what is the uh, like you can say mixer speed you can set then uh, your mixer is on or off you can get you are getting the indication for that then after what is the temperature in tank 1 what is the temperature in tank 2 tank 3 and tank 4 what is the flow rate or what is the level everything you can monitor with this kata software from your control room you don't have to go into the plant and you don't have to check it over there you can monitor it from your control room or you can say from your uh, computer screen <coughs> Here you can say this is the another example of SCADA. Initially, tank is getting filled. Then after it, that liquid is supplied to another one, there is a heating process is going on. And you can say heating process. So in an animation, you can monitor, visualize your entire process, and you can monitor and control it. <coughs> this is also another example. Then after the another component is that HMI, human machine interface we are using into the machine automation. When we talk about the SCADA and HMI is almost different, uh, similar. Only the difference is that SCADA is a software, HMI is a hardware. When we have to monitor or control entire process of plant, for entire plant, then we have to use the SCADA. But we want to monitor for only particular machine. If you talk about the machine automation, then we have to use HMI, human machine interface. Apart from that, all the features will be same. Recipe, you will get it. Security, you will get it. Alarms, you can monitor with the alarms. You can generate the graphs and you can monitor your process. <coughs> then after control panel will be there. Whatever the process is going over there, for that, you have a, a controller over there. Then you, there will be a switch gear components there. And that all wiring has been done through a control panel. So it will look like this, like this control panel. You can say this is our HMI. And from there, there we are getting a push buttons over here. And we can control our process from here. We can monitor a machine automation process from this HMI. And this is the inside view of the panel. <clears throat> then VFT is there, variable frequency drive. In industries or in machine, we have to control uh, motors. So we have to control a motor, it means we have to own it on or we have to do on and off. Then we have to give a direction command, forward or reverse. Then we have to change the frequency or you can say speed, RPM. Then after we have to run it at multiple frequency. So these features will uh, we, we will use through VFD, variable frequency drive. With the help of variable frequency drive, we can do then all these tasks. So here you can say there will be three type of drives. One will be AC drives, then will be you can say DC drives or third is the servo drive. So these are the AC drives and this is the servo drive. So to control the induction motor, we have to use AC drives. And if you talk about the robotic arms, to control the robotics arms, we have to use the, where the angle-based process is going on. You can say position-based process is going on. To control that, we have to use servo drive. Communication protocols. We have to use different, different communication protocols in industries. Like we have a controllers that is placed in our plant. Then we have a, you can say SCADA system that is in our control room. So whatever the process is going over there, we want to monitor and control from the SCADA. So we have to take a data from PLC and we have to give that data to our SCADA. So for that, we have to do a communication or networking. But for that, we are using different, different type of protocols, Morbus, Profibus, Profinet, Canopen, Serial, Pro, RS232 uh, two, two, three, two protocols. Different, different protocols we have to use based on our require, requirement, based on our applications, we have to select it. And the last is DCS, distributed control system. What is DCS? DCS, the abbreviated version of the PLC, you can say it can handle lacks of input output and wherever the redundancy system is required. Redundancy system, it means we cannot tolerate a, even a 10 seconds or one seconds of plant shut down over there. Whatever the process is going on, that should not be stopped due to any fault. So in that case, uh, and this type of process is going mostly in oil and gas industries. So we have to create a similar of backup system over there. And if any fault occurs, so there will be a primary system and another one will be secondary system. That, uh, that architecture is called DCS, distributed control system. So if any fault is occurring in the primary sector, the uh, primary system, then within you can say less than 20 milliseconds, that process is going to be converted, or you can say handled by the secondary system. Once the primary system is fixed, again, it is going to switch over automatically. You don't have to do anything. It is going to switch automatically. So that type of architecture is called DCS distributed control system. <coughs> now, the next topics we have that is industry 4.0. And nowadays we people 
are talking lot about the industry 4.0 industry 4.0 but what is that so industry 4.0 is nothing but that is the revolution of the industry so till now there is this is the fourth revolution industry 1.0 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 so what is 1.0 1.0 is like in initially in, in 1784 the process is controlled by the steam then after in industry 2.0 mass production and electric uh, energy was there industry 3.0 that is automation computers and electronics so already we talked about the automation so automation is industry 3.0 now don't think that industry 4.0 is already there it means industry 3.0 automation now no required but the condition is that if you want to switch to the industry 4.0 then first you have to do or you can say you must your uh, your plant or your machine or your system must be at first industry 3.0 then and then you will be able to switch or you will be able to move over industry 4.0 so in simple terms if i say industry 4.0 is nothing but that is the digitalization we are going to use different different type of technologies for our process so <clears throat> you can see this is the global market of the industry 4.0 in 2019 this market is 71.7 usd billion dollar and by 2024 this market is going to be 156 so you can say 157 almost double global market of industries uh, this is the distribution like by region wise in that you can see apac means asia pacific countries have a more contribution that is denoted in this green and in this asia pacific countries is china japan south korea and india is are available and these are the manufacturing industry like where the most manufacturing things are going happen in this type these countries <clears throat> so industry 4.0 as i said that is nothing but the digitalization of your process digitalization of your machine digitalization of your of uh, uh, you can say your process manufacturing process or you can say manufacturing industries or you can say factories <clears throat> So in automation, we have the pyramid. That 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 pyramid has a five level: sensors and actuators will be there, then PLC will be there, SCADA, then MES system will be there, ERP system will be there, and then after your industry 4.0 now will be added over there. So in industry 4.0, we are going to use these technologies. You can say we are going to use autonomous robot. We are going to use horizontal and vertical system integration. Then after Internet of Things, that is the big word for us. industry 4.0 internet of things iot we will discuss more in details in next slides then cyber security will be there cloud computing will be there additive manufacturing augmented reality virtual reality big data analytics artificial intelligence machine learning this all technologies comes under the industry 4.0 <coughs> so why industry 4.0 so there are the benefit of the industry 4.0 you can say advantage you will get a better quality you can more into you can increase more productivity then after uh, your decision power will be strong you can improve your decision power because you will get a lots of data and by analyzing those data you can improve your decision making mass customization you can do the customization production faster production and quality will be better <clears throat> okay so faster production it means you can upgrade your like you can uh, make your production fast because you, you will get a uh, lots of data and by analyzing that you you will be able to figure it out mass customization customization as i said best on individual customer you can customize your product you can deliver it on time better quality if i take example top 100 european manufacturing could save an estimated of 160 billion in the cost of scrapping or reworking defective product if they could eliminate all defect it means they are using automation but still there are chances that your product got get defected if you are depending on manual process also your product may get defective uh, and because of that they have to scrap that product or maybe there is some issue they have to rework on it so all this if they can figure it out with this industry point zero they can save this much of amount <clears throat> productivity will be increased as i said improve decision making power will be improved there are technical challenges are uh, still technical challenges are there you can say communication reliability then cyber security if we are going to digitalize if we are going to digitalize then there will be a you can say cyber security issue will be there so there are challenges but uh, like uh, whenever the like by time going going on it, it, the solution will be there over so cyber security will be there maturity of machine intelligence handling a big data because nowadays we are generating a lots of data if you can say like uh, i can say that uh, uh, earlier before before geo has come 
right so we were using an internet but that is very limited because individual person is doing a recharge of 1 or 2 gb for entire month and nowadays we are using 3 gb 4 gb per day right so based on that you can say we are generating a lots of data so to handle that data there are challenges but that will be figure it out <clears throat> there will be a social impact on that right lack of adequate skill tests unemployment uh, will be there because uh, we are going to be completely automatic so we don't have to uh, depend on the labor so there will be uh, unemployment will be there also so this is you can say this is the uh, simple example of industry 4.0 this entire robotic process industry is going on the bottle is going over there then the robot is picking off and this robot is sending the data to this control room plc and this control room has a plc and this has control room and apart from that sending a data wirelessly so this person can see this person can see all this data and monitor the entire process from his laptop or you can say from his mobile or tablets <coughs> now what is the smart factory now the last topic was that last topic is that so what is smart factory smart factory automation so smart factory are the wave of the future you can say smart factories are the wave of the future once we move to the industry 3.0 you can say automation and then we will move to the industry 4.0 then your entire factory is going to be your process is going to be smart your machine is going to be smart so as the name implies a smart factory it means that is going to be a smart right we are using a smartphone because the smartphone is connected with the internet and we are doing a lots of things so that's why our phone earlier we used to call it this normal phone mobile phone but now we are calling it smartphone the simple things over here factory was there earlier earlier automation is there factory was there also but now it is going to be a smart so smart factory is defined as factory where physical production process and operation are combined with digital technology as i said industry 4.0 is nothing but that is the digitalization with the digital technology smart computing big data to create more opportunities to system for companies that focus on manufacturing and supply chain management to increase their manufacturing to solve their problem or you can say to improve their supply chain management industry are going to be smart in nowadays <clears throat> so smart factory will be intelligent and automated factories where machine are network with each other and able to diagnose and solve problems by collecting and analyzing data in real time so there suppose in your factories 10 machines are there so all those 10 machine will be connected with each other and they will transfer the data with each other and they will learn the process from each other and that's called a machine learning machine learning is also the part of industry 4.0 zero so the smart factory are aspect of industry 4.0 a new phase in the industrial revolution that focus heavily on real time data embedded sensors iot connectivity automation and machine learning and artificial intelligence so these are the technologies that are going to be used in smart factory automation <clears throat> now what is iot simple you know that internet of things in simple word iot means taking all the things in the world and connecting thing them to internet whatever the whatever the gadgets we have whatever the things we have we are going to connect with the internet that's called internet of things that's called iot <clears throat> nowadays you can say iot why we use because we have a 7.6 billion population and apart from that 50 billion devices are connected with the internet so you can say per person 6.58 or you can say six devices are connected so we are using uh, we are generating lots of data how iot works simple examples like suppose if we measure a temperature then we will say, uh, me measure the temperature then we will data we will send this data to our gateway our gateway will send this those data to cloud to, and then after that from the mobile app or from our laptop we will access this that data so this that's how iot is works okay <clears throat> let me let me go into the application of iot so already you people are using iot like suppose you are wearing a smart watches right that is also connected like if you have apple watches so in that you have a internet facility also that you are able, you can uh, insert a sim into that and then the, you can connect with the internet and then after you don't require the mobile also itself right so uh, uh, So, uh, smart watches are there then we are doing a smart home like suppose if we want to like we are doing a home automation also right with the iot 
like uh, we want to on or off our ac from our mobile application we are doing it right we want to uh, uh, you can say light on or light off everything nowadays we are getting a smart light also so that is where uh, the example or application of it so you can say smart home variable smart cities baroda is a uh, also a smart city right automotive industries and transport industries smart grid industries medical and healthcare where iot is mostly used then industrial iot in industry right agriculture nowadays agriculture also smart supply chains you can say amazon and flipkart they have a very very big warehouses so they are doing a smart supply chain management over there and retail stores also iot device you are familiar with this old device google home amazon echo or you can say your alexa smart lock bulbs everything okay smart watches fitness belt so all these are the iot devices now for the iot devices as i said that we have like whatever the data we have to send to the gateway then set, uh, gateway will send this data to uh, cloud so we have a different different clouds are available google cloud also available microsoft azure aws from the amazon or from the ibm watson mindsphere from the siemens now what is node red so node red in simple terms if i say that is going to work as a gateway whatever the data we have that we will send to this node red as a gateway this gateway will send this data to cloud and from the cloud we will access it from the entire wherever we uh, from the remote location also through the internet so node red is generally flow based programming which is developed by the ibm engineers okay so here you can say this is the snapshot of the node red programming where you have to take a nodes and you have to connect with this way you have to connect it <clears throat> and this is the dashboard of the node red they by using this ip or by using the website link you can remotely monitor and control from anywhere okay node red can be installed in locally system or you can say on your raspberry pi uh, or arduino or any other controllers and cloud also if you have like nowadays right now what i will do i will in, i will do the demonstration through the node red on my local system but later on if it is required we can put it in the cloud so we can access it from the anywhere <clears throat> okay what is cloud as you know that the cloud is nothing but whatever like simply put simply the cloud is the internet more specifically it's all of the things you can access remotely so if i take give you example of uh, you can say uh, just one minute i have to connect my charger you are you guys are using google photos or you can say google drive so that is the cloud whatever the data we have we are putting into the google drive and whenever we want to access those data we are using through the internet so that is our cloud right you can say gmail google drive yahoo all these are your cloud now let us take a application demo example so in demo example what we are going to do suppose we have a one plc or you can say you have a sensors and controllers so plc is going to generate data that data you are we are going to send to our gateway so we have a gateway as a node red node red is our gateway and this node red will send this data to cloud so we have a cloud that is ibm cloud and from this ibm cloud we will monitor and control our this process whatever the process is going by this plc we will control it from the remote location from our mobile or from anywhere so as i said first whatever the data is going to be generated then we that with data we will send to node red node red gateway will send this data to ibm cloud and then after whatever the data ibm cloud has that again suppose from here if you are giving any command then what will happen this command from the cloud from your suppose you are controlling it from your mobile so you will give a command suppose let's take example to turn on ac of home so what we are doing we are giving a command from our mobile so from mobile those data is going to be cloud then from your gateway whatever the gateway is used and then after that data is going to be right now we have a plc suppose in uh, example ac is there so that command is going to be applied on ac so uh, this thing will happen in our demo practical applications okay so let's take a demo uh, first let me uh, set mobile phone first in
okay so uh, here you can see the screen uh, in my, my camera screen here you can see this is the box this is nothing but this is the plc here you can say i have this is schneider brand plc this is my plc and i have a prepared it with the, some inputs indications left and you can here this device this is my drive variable frequency drive and this is my motor so let's consider this is uh, the one type of one application related to smart machine suppose in your machine you have to control your motors right you have to monitor your motor frequency or you can say current and everything and that we want to do with the iot internet of things we will do these things right so what will happen right now i have created this you can say i have created this uh, uh, iot uh, iot user interface from there we will give a command you can see here i will give command to on and off drive or you can see uh, let me do like this from here we will give a command to on and off then after motor has a frequency so we will give a frequency from here okay so let me give a command of on okay and i have applied already frequency 8 so you can see i have i have not touch anything over here i have a given command from my website that is baroda iot.eu i have created a, a website or you can say i have created all these things in uh, cloud so i am giving a command from i am accessing that cloud and i am giving a command <clears throat> you can see suppose if i increase the frequency you can see my motor frequency is getting increased right you can over monitor all the data from here i have created one screen you can monitor all the data you can say what is the motor torque right now motor speed is 510 rpm what is voltage between two phase drive operating time since how long this drive is working then what is the nominal current of the drive what is the actual current of this motor that is that is 0.4 ampere what is the actual frequency that is 17 and what is the direction of the motor so right now it's working in forward let's change the direction so i'm going over here in command window and i'm changing the direction you can say motor is going to stop and now it is going to work in the reverse direction and similar way you can say let's go back to our display and you can see you can see right now is showing a reverse direction also we have a generated a graph over here you can see here right along with that <coughs> i have created a cloud also in cloud i have designed a platform where we can monitor all these things also you can see right now the frequency is 70 motor rpm is 510 this is the ibm cloud you can see over here this is the ibm cloud 510 you can see 70 hertz frequency in the gauge i am showing it in gauge 510 rpm right location also it is showing you can see here it is spinning over here location also i have then after graph is also generating right now is it is a stable frequency let us let change it i am giving a frequency 32 now you can see let's see the more motor is running fast now and let us check graph also you can see now it is generated you can see it is stable at 32 right rpm is also mentioned over here then after you can see the graph is generated so let us take example also from the mobile uh, maybe you people will think that i am doing the local system and i am giving a command so it is accept accepting but let me do it from the mobile just a minute i am opening the same website in my mobile okay and you can see i am getting those data 960 rpm right now okay same
okay you can see still motor is running still my motor is running right so how i created this that i will explain you now also i have created some features in that let's take suppose i have a set alarm over there also so what is happening in that alarm so if my frequency goes below 42 42 hertz then i will get a alarm on my telegram as well as on my email also i will get a alarm on my email also okay let's change the frequency just one minute you i will be there okay let's change the frequency to 50 hertz you can see i got the alarm that high frequency 49 hertz at so and so time time with date and let me open my mail also which i have configured in this you can see i got the alarm motor frequency is high timing and motor all frequency alarms now let us <coughs> change the frequency to the normal I have changed it to normal i got the message that alarm reset frequency is normal now yeah. and similar way i got you can see frequency high alarm as well as you can see Also, sir, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. You are audible, okay, sir. Okay. Perfect. So I think okay. I am facing some issue, man. I think with the internet connecting. Okay. we got the mail also that frequency alarm is reset the normal frequency at 36 hertz so whatever the process is going in your plant whatever the process is going in your machines that you can monitor from the anywhere let us take this web address and let's open here in another page so suppose if you think that this is your mobile page so let's open it over here and from that we can also control it suppose if i want to give a off command so you can see my motor is off let me give a on command again let me put frequency and this is off this is again on you can see let me give a command from here 18 and it is going to run it let me give a command of reverse so first it is going to stop and then again it is going to be on if i want to change the frequency like this 40 hertz i can give a frequency from here also as a numeric input and the same all the data i can monitor it from wherever i am suppose my plant or my machine is in baroda but i am in delhi i can monitor the entire process with the help of this industry 4.0 or you can say iiot industrial internet of things <clears throat> okay so how i created the, uh, this logic that i will explain you uh, in a fast way so initially what i this is the my node red so as i said node red i have installed in my local as well as cloud so this is you can see the address 127.0.0 so this is my local node red so what will happen this is my plc programming the whatever over here to control this drive or to motor or plc this is my logic so what will happen whatever the data is over here that data is going to be sent to first local so whatever the data i have that i will get it 
through this modbus communication on my node red i will get the data and then what i have did i have sent this data to my cloud here you can say this is event this is my ibm cloud so i have sent this data to my cloud okay now what is happening i have another you can say in a url baroda iot so this is my cloud node red so what is happening whatever the data i have sent from this local whatever the data i have sent from this local that i am receiving on this cloud or here here you can say i have mentioned as a read so i am reading all those plc data and i have created this logic you can say to display the frequency voltage operating time whatever the data is right now in this drive or plc that i am reading from local that local is sending to my cloud and i am reading all these data and i am displaying all this data like this i am displaying all this data like this right then after another is write logic it means whatever the command i am giving from here whatever the command to on the drive to on motor to change the frequency to change the direction whatever the command i am giving over here that i have logic that i mentioned it then after this again will go to the cloud that is my ibm cloud that will go to the my cloud and then after what will happen from my local i will read this data i will read this from the cloud and i will write those data to my plc so whatever command i will give from here to on the drive right so when i press this on switch so what will happen from my cloud that goes to my cloud main cloud and that data i will receive in local cloud that data i will receive in local and then this data is going to send to my plc here you can see modbus right is mentioned it means that data is going to transfer to my you can say plc and accordingly my plc will go, give command to my vfd variable frequency drive and my vfd is going to give a command to my motor accordingly motor is going to run let's stop it <clears throat> right so this is the simple demonstration you can uh, uh, i have shown you for the machine automation where we are going to operate monitor or control our process from our cloud you can say from remotely anywhere we can monitor it from the our mobile also so uh, that's it kausal sir from my end uh, if anyone has any query you can ask we have a 5 to 10 minutes yes sir uh, actually i am uh, thankful to you for sir uh, uh, such a nice knowledge sharing uh, webinar and uh, it will be started with the concept of automation and ended with the complete demonstration so thank you uh, ankit sir for such a knowledge sharing uh, webinar from your end thanks sir with thank this you. i'm uh, with this i'm uh, con con concluding the webinar sir thank you okay sir. thank you so much